What's going on, everyone? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On today's episode, we have Ryan Stewart. What's up, Ryan? What's up, Alex, man? How's it going? Good to be here. Hey, man. Thank you for joining me today. I've been looking forward to having you on here for a very long time because you've been extremely helpful to me and my team as a mentor, as a friend. And I figured, you know, we'd showcase a lot of the cool things that you're talking about. They have to do a lot a lot of what you're doing has to do with my audience, what they're doing, what they're working on, their marketers or business people. And it would be cool for us to just have a nice chat about your projects, about your career, about everything that you've done so far. So thanks for being here, man. I'd love, I'd love to, man. Let's do it. Bro, so you, right behind you, uh, some people are watching, some people are listening. Right behind you, you have the SEO Blueprint book. Let's dive right into that and how that came together. Yeah, for sure. So um, a couple of years ago, it's a couple of years old now. I think it's it's going to hit three years in February. Three years, two years in February. I believe two, uh, yeah. E either way, uh, it came about because I have a, a, a company called The Blueprint Training. And essentially what we do there is we've got a really airtight process for kind of productizing SEO into a service that's a lot more manageable for agencies or consultants. Um, and one of the ways that we decided to help promote the company was to basically take everything that was in there from our SOPs, our strategies, our processes, all of our templates and tools and stuff like that, uh, and put it into a book. And um, essentially, it's 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 done very well for, for us, not necessarily from a revenue generation point of view. We actually lost money on the book when it comes to the total amount of sales generated from the book versus what we spent, because I didn't write the book. I actually hired a company to write it, and it was, it was quite expensive. Plus, when you factor in all the marketing and all the things that we did around it, um, I've actually got a video on my YouTube channel where I break down the cost and, and show kind of like the direct ROI from the book. But it's more about what it does from a client acquisition uh, point of view. Basically, what we did within the book is we gave away a ton of our free templates when it comes to like keyword research and technical SEO. We just created a microsite that said, you know, to get these free templates, visit this microsite, led them to a, a, a lead generation landing page where they opted in to get it. So essentially, we were able to take them from the book, get them into our ecosystem via email, and then convert them into clients of the Blueprint Training, which starts at $5,000 uh, for a package. So the book alone has generated hundreds of thousands in revenue and clients, but we actually lost money in when it came to the sales of the book versus what we actually spent on getting the book created, ironically enough. So when when did the concept of putting the book together start out? Was it just one day you saw like this massive amount of material and you said, let me put it into a book? Was it an opportunity that somebody brought to you? Kind of like this podcast was an opportunity that somebody brought to me. I wasn't looking into doing it, but there was already so much around that allowed the opportunity for this for this ecosystem to take place. How was that? How was that transition? How was that shift? I mean, it's just an it's just a marketing opportunity. You know, it's just another another platform, another avenue to get our messaging out there. The thing about books too is that what's cool is that you can actually see. So back here, I have some copies. It's a hard copy. Uh, so like a book can do a lot of things indirectly for you too. It's you know, I always tell people if you're writing a book, you're probably going to lose money on it. Just like creating an album. Yeah, uh, you know, if if you're an artist, you know. You don't, if you're an artist, most people know this. I don't know what it is in today's world because things have changed, but 10 years ago, you don't make money off your album. You make money off your tours. You basically create an album to get your content out there, get it consumed, get people to fall in love with it and get them to pay for a ticket and merch and all that other stuff when they show up to the concert. A book is very similar in that sense, right? But what a book can also do is it can also lend a lot of credibility because when people see a published hard copy book, they assume that you've gone through the process traditional of getting published and signing a book deal. And you've got something that's valuable enough for somebody to, to cut you a contract in, in order to write a book. But in reality, Amazon has really changed the game when it comes to, to books. All you literally have to do is put together something. It could be 10 pages. It could be one page. It could be a million pages. But you just basically have to format it in a way that is is suitable for what they call Amazon print on demand. So essentially, you just literally upload your book formatted in the right way essentially as an ebook, a PDF to the Amazon platform. And then Amazon will actually print it on demand as it's ordered. So essentially when somebody orders the book, they can either order an ebook uh, or they can order a hard copy book and Amazon will actually print the book and format it for you and send it directly to the customer. So the book in itself has lent a lot of credibility to our program because people now look at me as an author <laughs> when in fact I didn't even write the book. And when in fact, it's actually not a traditionally published book, it's just an Amazon published book. But again, the Amazon platform in itself has millions of searches every day, people looking for books, looking for information. It's just an easy way. It's kind of like having a website when it comes to getting ranked in Google for SEO, right? It's just getting a book in front of people who are actively searching for that information 
And again, it's another, it's another platform. It's another medium to get your content out there. Just like podcasts have value with audience for people. Like I listen to podcasts when I'm walking my dog or riding my bike, you know, it's an audio format. Um, when it comes to books, some people prefer to read. Some people want to sit down and read. That's how they consume information. And they would rather do so in a full book format versus, um, again, I'm not really, I, I'm, dyslexic. So I don't, I don't read too much. I listen to books and I like watching YouTube videos, you know, so all these different platforms offer a different medium, a different uh, way to get your messaging to people. But in reality, you know, it's the same messaging that we talk about on YouTube. It's the same messaging that I talk about on my podcast and my blog is just formatted in a way for people who prefer to read. So it's just another, it's another marketing channel. In short, for those who are just hearing about SEO and what it means, which I'm sure a lot of people know, but us being so in it that we forget that there's people who have no fucking clue what this means. In short, what is SEO, Ryan? SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's essentially the process of getting your website to rank higher organically in search engines. So if you go to Google right now and you type in, I don't know, roofing companies near me, you're going to get ads on the top. Those are what are called paid search, right? So you can actually log into a platform owned by Google and you can bid on those keywords, just supply and demand, or you can rank organically underneath it and ranking organically underneath that is the process of SEO. There's a whole bunch of different ranking factors that Google looks for. We talk about it in the book. You can Google it and find out too, but SEO is, is a very, very, very powerful marketing channel. Obviously Google is a very powerful platform that people are literally typing in exactly what they want. So if you can get your website to show up, it's very high intent traffic, right? Versus social media where people are scrolling and you've got to go out of your way to entertain people and get them to stop their scrolling, then get them to consume. Google is point of interest, right? People are going to Google and typing in exactly what they want. So if you can get your website to show up, the intent behind that traffic, the intent behind what they're looking for, if you can match that, it's pretty much shooting fish in a barrel when it comes to making money. Yeah. And not only is it on the, the actual like like keyword search where you're actually seeing websites, guys, but you see it on video, you see it on images. Images could be SEO, videos could be SEO. There's a whole other world to this. You know, you probably hear a lot about Facebook ads and Instagram ads and TikTok ads, Snapchat ads. Those are all great channels to advertise on. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not knocking any of them, but SEO is a really strong tool that I neglected for a long time as a marketer when I first got into the game. It wasn't until one of my mentors, John D. Saunders, put me onto your content, Ryan, that he said, hey, check this guy out. This guy is like super badass in SEO because I had a bunch of questions for John. I always bombarded John with questions, always answering my questions. I started consuming your content, saw your personal brand, uh, saw your, your course material. We connected and got a lot of value from it. Realistically, I never really offered SEO as a service at my agency. And until I was able to go through your process, learn SEO the right way, and then be able to implement all those systems with my team and be able to just easily pass that along to have a smooth process through and through was really important for me. And it was like, it was a catalyst in my journey into SEO, right? Because it just being able, it, it was like, it was like plug and play. If you understand SEO and you understand organization, you could plug the blueprint system in right away and begin cranking at any project. You, you'll be driving results for people in no time. And I've done this time and time and time again throughout my agency. So it's been really cool to see how you've developed not only your personal brand, Ryan, but also your business, right? I, 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 came across you through somebody that recommended you. I started consuming your content. I became part of the blueprint, implemented everything from the blueprint, saw success in the blueprint. And ultimately you started growing, right? You came out with a book, you guys came out with a plugin for the blueprint training, which was incredible as a, as a SaaS tool, as a SaaS product. And then my agency became a client of that product. So all of that value that you packed up front, whether you may have written that book specifically or not, it's all of your knowledge and your team's knowledge, everybody that, that's ever worked into your brand right into that book, right into that program. And I think it's extremely helpful for people to educate themselves, whether it's free programs, whether it's paid programs. Like you said, there's a ton of material on YouTube. There's a ton of material out there. If you really wanna learn, if you really wanna implement these things, they're out there. So let's talk about, let's talk about value-driven content. Let's talk about all of the material that you put out and instant gratification. Cause a lot of the people that listen to this want to implement something and they want it to work right away for them. How long has it taken you to actually see the fruits of all of this process in the blueprint? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going on year 15, uh, as, as a marketing entrepreneur here. And, you know, I, I guess a lot of people jump in at when they, when they see people online doing things, they, they kind of jump to the end. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't see how the sausage is made, if you will. So it's taken me a long time to get to a point where 
I have a business that can sustain itself, right? I have a, I have two businesses, well, three businesses, really that have teams that help to run them. I don't have to have my direct, like you don't really get to be a business owner until your direct input is no longer needed, right? And you've got people and you've got team and you've got systems and you've got loyal customers who who are loyal to your brand and want and want to use you and come directly to you. It's not really a business until that point. You know, it's really a hustle, which you know a lot about, right? So, you know, I've been hustling, if you will, for for 15 years to get to this point. So when you zoom out, it looks really far. But when you're when you're in it, you know, as long as you're taking steps forward, you know, every every day, every week, every month, every year, it goes by very fast, you know, and you don't really realize that you're that you don't have a business until 15 years later when when you when you truly get to that point. So I've been doing this for a long time with a lot of different types of clients and a lot of different types of services and a lot of different types of businesses. You know, I, I, I've currently really own and operate two companies now, the Blueprint Training, which we talked about, that's training for digital agencies, specifically digital agencies who struggle with client acquisition or are looking to run a service that is not like hurting cats every day, right? Marketing, there's so much that goes into marketing. We teach what's called a productized service. So doing something, solving a specific pain point for a specific type of client, and then putting a lot of processes around that so you can scale it and automate it with very high margins. We teach a lot of that. And then my other company is a digital agency. So basically, if your company struggles with acquisition, we'll do everything for you to get more customers, whether that's SEO or Facebook ads. So that's really my two folks of, of my companies now. But getting to this point, uh, it's been a long, long, long hustle. And um, yeah, I mean, there's really no shortcuts to getting here. You just got to put in the work. <laughs> yeah. And you, you put in a lot of work, but like I was mentioning, you put out a lot of content. So let me... I want to hear your thoughts about this because there's people that have uh, deferring opinions about this, but you know, your whole blueprint training is basically everything that you've ever created as a businessman, as a, as a marketing agency owner, your secrets, your tips, your tricks, it's your hot sauce, right? It's like, you're giving, you're giving it all away in your book and your program. At what point did you realize it was probably better to put out all of this content to help people to then be able to nurture people and then be able to help them at a higher level? Versus thinking, hey, if I put everything out, my competitors are just going to grab it or people are just going to take my secret sauce and they're going to run with it. And my business is, is in shambles. Like, how do you make that decision? Like, So, so I kind of stumbled out of by accident, to be honest with you. I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years. So when I first started creating content, it was back when basically blogging was the only thing. Like YouTube wasn't really a thing. Podcasts sure as hell were not a thing. Instagram was not owned by Facebook yet. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was, a, it was a different ecosystem. And I really started just kind of blogging around. I was building WordPress websites. I was getting them traffic. I, I was just basically documenting what I was talking about, what I was doing. Um, and it was really just as a means to, to try and get some attention around myself. If, if I really break it down, right. I was going to Facebook groups. I was posting in Facebook groups. This is back when I was, you know, barely had uh, two cents to two sticks to rub together. Right. And in regards to people stealing that information, you know, what you learn pretty quickly is that information is free, man. You know, you can go on Google and look up how to do anything, anything in this world. It's execution. That re really is, is, is what makes a difference, right? So I have no problem telling people how to do things because I know that they're not going to do them. <laughs> it's just, it's just how humans are. Like we have a thirst for knowledge, but we, when it comes time to, to, to actually start executing, and I'm not knocking people. It's really hard, dude. I mean, especially when it comes to SEO, there's so much that goes into it. There's cost, there's time, there's, there's knowledge, there's everything. Right. So, but like in terms of creating content, it, like as soon as you, when I started doing it and getting some traction, it, it became a no brainer that like, this is how I was going to grow my business this is how I was going to get customers by actually taking them on and then talking about it and documenting what I was doing. So, you know, as time evolved, blogging became making videos on YouTube, which turned into a podcast. I mean, I'm not really big on social media. And actually, ironically, the more that my career has grown and the more successful that I've gotten, I've actually stopped creating content because who I am as a person doesn't lend to like, you'll never find, I don't even use Instagram. I can't, I, it just, it makes me uncomfortable. I, like the whole, everything about Instagram makes me uncomfortable. I'm a painful introvert. This is not something that I really enjoy doing it. I just push myself to create content because I knew it was what it was going to take to grow my business. But now that I've gotten to a certain point where I can step back from the business, I'm now empowering my team. I'm hiring people who can continue to create content on behalf of us to push the business forward. Because especially now, you know, and especially when it comes to agency services, it, content is just, is, is the best way to not only reach people that kind of like top funnel, cold traffic, bring people into your ecosystem, even introduce them to who you are, 
you know, just by people searching for tips on like, you know, I don't know how to scale Facebook ads. If you've got a blog article about there, you've got a podcast episode about it. If you've got a YouTube video about it, you're instantly connecting with someone and you're providing value to them. And it's just going to open up that conversation for them to want to become a, a client. And this is talking about B2B. This doesn't, this doesn't really apply to e-commerce, right? Because if you're an e-commerce brand, I wouldn't recommend that you start a podcast. I mean, you could, but it would probably have more lifestyle based. It wouldn't be about like, Hey, like, like this, for example, is one of our, is one of our clients you know, a, a pair of lines. And we can talk about how we're marketing this versus how I market my agencies and businesses. But when it comes to service-based businesses, especially higher ticket agency stuff services, like people aren't just going to, it's not, people will just like come to your website and they're like, oh, I need an agency. So I'm going to pay these people 10 grand a month just off of what we put on your website. You know, there's a, there's a significant amount of, as you said, nurturing that goes into it and you nurture people with content. And really the best way to nurture people is to provide information and value that they're searching for that helps them to break down that wall of you being of them knowing that you're a good solution to the problems. And then also just providing a ton of social proof, right? Like case studies, track record, testimonials, other client stories that are in the similar position. Then these are all forms of content, right? These are all different ways that we can connect and nurture people throughout um, that stage. But at the core of what it is, like just creating content is like still the best way to, to, to get like service-based clients, right? Like anyone who's paying significant amount of money to do a service, you got to be doing some form of content marketing. Again, when it comes to e-commerce, it's it's a, it's a different ballgame. It's content is still necessary, but it's a different type of content, right? It's not necessarily like a long form blog post. It's probably going to be something a little bit more entertainment-based as, oppo- as opposed to educational-based. You know what I'm saying? Right. As far as SEO, right? Because we're touching on the topic of SEO and, you know, wrapping up 2021, jumping into 2022. What are some things that people should be looking out for? You know, basic level stuff, you know, they're not an SEO geek, SEO expert like us, but they want to get their website ranking or they want to do a little bit better. They want to get seen a little bit more. What are a few things that people should be looking out for this year? For sure. So, so, so to break it down at the simplest form, I'll actually use how our agency delivers our services as kind of the example. When it comes to SEO, people tend to overcomplicate it, especially people in the business. If you ask somebody who's an SEO professional, they're always going to overcomplicate it for a number of reasons, mainly because it elevates their sense of importance. And it also elevates them as being somebody that you want to pay a lot of money to help you out with your, with your problem. Right. But in reality, you know, again, I've been doing this for 15 years and I've seen Google go from being able, like I, when I first started, you could literally build a website <laughs> and within the same day, get it to rank on in first place on Google for whatever keyword you pretty much wanted. It was all kind of like a, like a hack, right? Google's algorithm has come a tremendously long way since then to the point where it got really hard, but now Google's telling you what they want. When, when it comes to SEO, you don't have to overcomplicate it. There's really, really three things to boil it down to that we focus on. Number one is foundational and technical performance, right? So having a website that is built according to Google's guidelines, they literally have something called Google Webmaster Guidelines. You can Google it and you can read it if you have the patience to do so. It literally tells you everything that should be accounted for from a structural and technical point of view with your website. So especially when we're talking about new businesses, small businesses, new websites, you know, websites that have less than a hundred pages on them specifically, like you don't need to spend a ton of time on technical SEO. Technical SEO becomes very important when we're talking about enterprise websites, target.com that's got 10 million pages and architecture and categories and taxonomies that you have to deal with because essentially what you want to do is you want to present your website to Google in a way that's organized. So Google can crawl it, understand it, and rank it for the keywords that you want it to. So if you've got all these different pages that are cannibalizing each other and blah, 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 et cetera, that's when technical SEO becomes important. So that's bucket one. It's kind of like technical foundational architecture, stuff like that. So again, if you're a smaller business, newer business, you don't have to spend too much time on that, especially if you use a platform like WordPress, it will pretty much take care of a lot of that stuff for you out of the box, right? So that then brings us to bucket number two, which is essentially keywords and content, right? And this is about building pages that meet the experience and deliver on the satisfaction that people are searching for, right? So for example, if somebody is searching for white shoes, right? The keyword white shoes, there is so many different ways that you could unpack that in terms of what they're looking for, right? Are they looking to look at pictures of white shoes? Are they looking to buy white shoes? Are they looking to find out what the new white shoe trends are for summertime, right? So this is where like keyword research comes into play and really digging into what are people are searching for and what's the intent behind that search. And that comes with experience that comes with uh, knowing the industry that comes with knowing your customers, which is a whole other conversation, but digging into that and just using 
the free tools and resources that are out there to do keyword research. There's literally tools out there where you type something in, it will spit back a list of keywords that people are searching for and also tell you the search volume and even like the search engine competition, right? Right, yeah, I use it, like Uber suggest, this is a great one, I always talk about it. I had Neil on the podcast, it works really well for my team. We use SEMrush. Yep, all the above. I mean, they're all the same. They're, they're literally all pulling from the same database now. <laughs> it's just, they just put a, a nice UI on top of it for whatever you prefer. Yeah, name. And guys, everything we're talking about here is going to be linked on the show notes on whatever app you're listening to on the website. If you want to take a look at any of these tools or you want to take a look at Ryan's content, webris.org, ryanwashere.com, Ryan was here on IG, or even on LinkedIn. He posts a lot of great stuff on there. Make sure you guys connect. Yeah, I appreciate that. So just finishing out bucket number two there uh, is keywords and then building pages, AKA content, right? That we talked about a little bit before, content that delivers on that experience. And this, this is where SEO can get, this is where a lot of companies mess up with SEO because what ends up happening is they'll end up creating content for the sake of content, right? Like, oh, Gary Vee told me that I had to create content. So I'm publishing 10 blog posts a month, but it's like, yeah, you're just kind of farting out content that nobody cares about, right? It doesn't deliver on the experience. It's not properly targeted. It's not overly helpful. It's not overly entertaining. It doesn't do anything, right? So this is where you know SEO can, can, can get challenging for people, but what you just want to focus on here at the most rudimentary level, understanding what people are searching for and understanding the intent behind that and creating content that matches that. So another good example that is going back to the white shoes example, right? Is that we probably want to break that keyword down into multiple searches, right? If people are looking for like like white shoe trends, then we probably want to create a blog post that has like, you know, 10 summer shoe trends, right? Like think GQ, right? Um, versus if they're looking for buy white shoes, then we want to make sure that we're mapping that more bottom funnel search to the product pages that they can buy. White shoes from, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So again, we could, or, or best white shoes, uh, again, a list, a list style blog, like, uh, yeah, like you just mentioned. The easiest way to understand what that intent is just go to Google and search for it. Cause literally Google's algorithm is so intelligent that they are ranking Google's algorithm is fed based on user behavior. So when somebody searches for white shoes and they don't click on anything, Google then sees what they search for next or what they click on, how much time they spend on that website. And they're refining their search results based on that. Right. So if somebody's looking for like, uh, you know, like best white shoes for summertime, you'll see like top 10, 20 shoes for summertime. Blah, blah. That's not by accident. That's because people are looking for a list of different shoes, different styles, what have you, right? So that's Google's algorithm refining itself based on that. So you can just search for what you're looking for, see what comes up and use that to begin the, the process of understanding what people should be, what you should be serving them in terms of content on your website. You know what I mean? And this also then feeds into our, the conversation that we we're having early about content, like blogs are one type of content, right? Um, and that's primarily where you're going to focus on, and not even blogs, but just like web-based content on your website is going to be the primary primary focus of your SEO effort. Yeah, blogs, resource guides, info guides. Yeah. Exactly. So that's bucket two. Then bucket three is all about basically authority, right? What Google wants to see is that if you have a brand new website that is not popular in Google's eyes, and I'll talk about how it measures popularity in a second, they don't really want to show you, right? It's kind of like, if you're not a good recommended resource on a topic, right? If like, if you're not supported and you're not recommended by people in terms of being an expert on shoes or a good source of information on shoes, Google's not going to want to show you. So how do they measure that authority? They measure that in what are, what are called links, right? So a link is like, you know, Huffington Post writes an article on the best shoe stores, you know, in the U S right. They're going to link out to those shoe stores. So if like on the list is like Nike, Adidas, like Alex's shoes, Ryan's shoes, they're going to link directly to your website. That link right there, basically Google counts that as a popularity count, a vote, right? Cause Google literally crawls from website to website through link. It's an HTML element. It literally passes the Google bot to website. So if Huffington Post is talking about you and they link to you, Google crawls from Huff Post to your website. And they're like, oh shit, like Huffington Post talked about you. So you must be knowledgeable right. on the subject about best white shoes for summertime, right? So basically there's a concept called link building within, within SEO where there's a bunch of different ways to get links. The best way that I recommend is usually through PR, right? So putting together a story, putting together something of value that you can then pitch to a reporter, pitch to a blogger, pitch to a, an influencer, have them write about you on their website and then link back to your website. The more of those links that you get, the higher that you're going to rank. It's really, it really is that simple when you break it down. So those are the three buckets. Number one, technical, number two, keywords and content, number three links. So actually our services, we, we move to this, what we call a sprint model, where we develop these sprints where we tackle each of those in three weeks. So we have a technical sprint, we have a content sprint, we have a link sprint. Um, so essentially you're paying us for a very short period of work, very intense um, to kind of speed up that process and just focus on those three buckets. 
I love that. Now, something I'm always curious about, right? Because there's so many ways of marketing right now and people are always looking at how they could market their business online on whatever platform it may be. But to me, it seems almost obvious that each and every single time, whenever, you know, we use Google for everything, right? Absolutely everything. And, and you were talking about intent for, for people just learning about intent. Intent on Google basically means that the way you search pretty much shows whatever intent you have on either learning, purchasing, whatever the case may be. So best white shoes isn't the same search as buy white shoes, right? Somebody that looking for best white shoes is maybe looking to understand what brands they're, they're trying to find. Maybe buy Nike white shoes, right? Is a more intent based keyword that, you know, it's somebody specifically looking for that. And just like everything else in products and services, people are looking for your product or service out there on Google or on YouTube for the most part. Why do you think people go to Facebook and Instagram and, and Snapchat and TikTok ads when it's so evident that there's low hanging fruit when it comes to keywords, when it comes to SEO, when it comes to PPC, when it comes to YouTube search? What are your thoughts on that? Speed. I mean, SEO takes a long time. You know, SEO is a, is a long, arduous process that is not that has mixed results for most companies. You know, if I can be blunt, like if you're a new website, I would never recommend you do SEO. It's way too long. The investment's going to be too big. Like you're looking at a solid six months of work before you're starting to get mediocre traffic. It's really between like years one and two, where you really start to get that exponential hockey curve for keywords yeah. that matter, right? Like, cause you can, you can write, you can build a bunch of content on your website about, you know, best sneaker trends, but if you're not selling those sneakers, then what's the point? Your traffic for the sake of traffic, right? So, you know, this is also why we've really elevated our agency to not just doing SEO, but we consider ourselves a growth agency, right? Performance marketing is what you said. And essentially what we do is when a client comes in, we sit down and we're just like, tell us what your problems are. Tell us what's keeping you up at night. Is it customer acquisition? Is it the fact that there's not enough hours in a day? Is it the fact that you're a marketing manager and the CEO has just wild expectations of what a marketing manager should do and you need help delivering all that, right? So um, I, know, I know that wasn't your question, but I'm leading up to that right now. Right. But, you know, so when we decide to use a Facebook or a YouTube ads or a TikTok ads is really based on what the customer needs, is based on what the client needs. So we go through this really deep process of understanding who is their target customer and what are they their pain points as well. We have this amazing system to develop offers. And once you have that offer, you can then take that and put together creative assets and run them on Facebook that are speaking directly to the pain point right now, which means they're going to get them to stop and click right now. So a lot of times, if you if, if anyone out there is familiar with Eugene Schwartz's stages of awareness, right? There's five stages of awareness. Top is unaware. Mid is, I, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, but the point is that SEO goes after people that are already in market, right? They're already searching for what they need. They're already searching for their problem, but those people are probably already influenced and they're probably already know what they're looking for. That's where SEO can be a little bit ineffective, right? Whereas with Facebook ads, you can go out there and you can reach people that don't even know that they're in market for something, right? And you can put together offers that bring them into your ecosystem and then convince them that they need it. So an example of that, I'll give you multiple examples of that, right? So an example of that would be for our company, the Blueprint Training, we run I mean, dude, we're running like $50,000 worth of traffic a month for our companies. Just a lot of traffic, a lot of that's how much we're spending on Facebook ads per month. And what we're doing is we're putting together, we're identifying who our audience is, agency owners, just like yourself. We spend a lot of time understanding what your pain points are. That comes from sales conversations. That comes from just knowing our market. That comes from being in business for five years. Comes from, and also from owning an agency myself. So I know what your pain points are, right? So we're talking about things like, you know, working nonstop, but never getting ahead, right? Common agency problem. It's like, if you're in a boat, that's got a bunch of leaks, you're constantly plugging one, another one springs up. You can never work in the business. You can never work on the business because you're always working in the business, right? So what's a solution for that? A solution for that is documented processes, right? If you have documented processes, you can follow those processes and then you can easily hire someone to manage that process. So you don't have to, right? So that's a good example of pain point solution, right? If we take that, we turn that into a little video, we turn that into some nice copy and we run that on Facebook to people that we know are agencies. A lot of times they don't even know that they have a problem with processes, right? So they're unaware of what their problem is, but they know, they're unaware of what the solution is, but they know what their problem is, right? So we'll run that against it and we can get people that never would be going to Google and searching for, I need processes, right? So essentially 
advertising is a good way to reach people who are not in market, who don't even know they're in market. You just identify with their problem and you create a solution for them, right? Whereas Google, people already know what their solution is and they're searching for the best company to help them solve that. So this is what we really specialize in it too, is cross-platform marketing, right? Is that we're saying, okay, so if Google is great for people who already know, can we use Facebook ads to influence them at the top of the funnel, get them to our website, use remarketing, and then also, you know, use the power of kind of Google search to refine what, what content we're creating and get them to convert over time. So this is what a funnel is, right? When people talk about a funnel, people usually talk about a funnel like, oh, create a webinar. Like, no, a funnel is understanding the entire customer journey. Stage of awareness, yeah. In serving content, like we talked about right in the beginning, serving content at the right stage of that journey based on where they are. Right. And that's why marketing technology is great because we can understand where they are without them telling us where they are. So we're able to, again, build these different experiences and nurture them throughout the whole process and eventually turn them into customers really without them even knowing it in a sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th that's pretty much how we connected. It was a funnel, right? I, I felt, I fell into your funnel, bro. Uh, somebody recommended you cause you pushed out fire stuff. Uh, I came across your course, took your course. You know, we did a few events together. We did a bunch of cool stuff together. You released products. This is, this is, this is how you nurture people and it's instant gratification is great, but it's not always going to happen exactly like that. You're going to have to work on your business for a while. Sometimes you're going to have to always consistently grow, learn, implement new things, talk to new people. And that's why I've always been really, really grateful for you, Ryan. You've been extremely helpful to my agency as an agency owner. All the content you put out is extremely valuable. My team really enjoys it. My team loves watching your videos. So we could attest that the content you create, bro your book, your plugin, your courses, that shit's real, that shit works. Thank you for being on the podcast today. <laughs> it was long overdue that, that you were on here and that we talked about how much you've helped my agency, how much you've helped my team, you know, going through your, going through your blueprint process allows for people on my team to eat every month for there to be stable jobs and for them to be able to make, sustain and maintain their families. I'm really grateful for it, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep putting out this amazing content. And guys, reach out to Ryan and his team. They're really communicative. Ryan puts out a lot of great content on his social medias. He helps out a lot of people. Maybe you're one of those people, or maybe you could just learn from consuming a little bit of his content about how you could push your brand to the next level. Thanks for being on, Ryan. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right.